Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 is right upon us, and with Season 1 airing almost two years ago and a movie released last year, I felt it was necessary to give you a refresher on the events that transpired before in the series. As always, if I miss anything important, let me know in the comments below. If you like my content and starve for more of it, eat up that subscribe button and help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. Without further ado, let's start. Gifted with exceptional athleticism and sporting talent, high school student Yuji Itadori receives a heartfelt plea from his dying grandfather to utilize his strength for the benefit of others. Moved by this encounter, Megumi Fushiguro, a student from Jujutsu High, sets out on a mission to find a dangerous cursed object, Ryomen Sukuna's finger, housing a fearsome supernatural entity known as a curse. Seeing the finger's energy within Yuji, Megumi locates him just as Curse's attacks, forcing him to fight back against overwhelming forces. Remembering his grandfather's words, Yuji joins the battle and, in a bold move, consumes the finger, unintentionally becoming possessed by the murderous Sukuna. Despite this twist, Yuji effortlessly suppresses Sukuna's malevolence, but Megumi now faces him as a curse and prepares to exorcise him believing it to be the only solution. Satoru Gojo, Megumi's formidable teacher, arrives and defeats Sukuna, allowing Yuji to regain control. However, Gojo incapacitates Yuji, revealing that the Jujutsu elders have condemned him to death, although he managed to temporarily suspend the execution. In their quest to neutralize Sukuna, who possesses a total of 20 fingers, only six have been recovered thus far. To neutralize Sukuna, Yuji must consume the remaining six fingers, risking his life. Driven by his desire to protect others, Yuji agrees and consumes another finger. Gojo takes Yuji to Jujutsu High to train him and harness his newfound powers. Yuji, Megumi, and Gojo are joined by Nobara as they venture into an abandoned building filled with curses under Gojo's guidance. During the mission, Nobara nearly sacrifices herself to protect a captive child from a curse, but Yuji rescues them just in time, assuring their safety. Through flashbacks, it is revealed that Nobara had once formed a close bond with a friend named Sayori, who had relocated to the countryside. Tragically, Sayori experienced ostracization and rejection from the locals due to her urban background, ultimately forcing her to flee. Witnessing this unjust treatment left a profound impact on Nobara, compelling her to leave her hometown behind and seek refuge in Tokyo. A month later, they receive a critical assignment to exercise a cursed wound in a detention center, resulting in the tragic loss of one of their comrades. Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara undertake a secretive investigation involving a mysterious entity known as a womb, concealed by Jujutsu High's assistant director. The prison they explore is now a nightmarish scene of chaos and inmate massacres. During a fierce confrontation, Yuji loses his hand but decides to unleash Sukuna's power. Megumi saves Nobara, and Sukuna effortlessly regenerates Yuji's limbs defeating a powerful curse and claiming one of his own fingers as a power source. Under Sukuna's grip, Yuji is held hostage as his heart is torn from his chest, ensuring his death if he returns to his body. Megumi confronts Sukuna but is overpowered. Intrigued by Megumi's potential, Sukuna takes notice. Despite the dire situation, Yuji miraculously resurfaced before succumbing to death due to severe blood loss. Megumi and Nobara encounter seasoned sorcerers Maki, Toge, and Panda, who informs them of the Kyoto Sisters school exchange event, offering a glimmer of hope. Meanwhile, Dagon, Jogo, Hanami, and human ally Geto conspire to capture Gojo and sway Yuji. Yuji awakens in Sukuna's eerie realm as their fates intertwine. Megumi and Nobara train diligently with second-year students in preparation for an upcoming tournament. Meanwhile, Sukuna manipulates Yuji into a deal where Sukuna can take control of his body in exchange for Yuji's heart. Yuji awakens with no memory of the pact, and Gojo keeps his resurrection a secret while training him to harness his cursed energy. Gojo reveals a plan involving a powerful cursed object, the Prison Realm, to subdue Gojo. However, Jogo has his own sinister agenda and vows to personally kill Gojo, launching an ambush as Gojo heads to meet the Jujutsu Tech Principal. After Jogo fails to defeat Gojo, the sorcerer explains his ability to create an infinity that slows down attacks, making him untouchable. Gojo swiftly retrieves Yuji from Jujutsu Tech to teach him about domain expansions. 
He obliterates Jogo's own domain expansion with his infinite void technique, decapitating him. Hanami escapes with Jogo's head, and together with Geto, they join a gathering of cursed spirits, including Mahito. Their plot involves imprisoning Gojo and unleashing Sukuna on the world. Nobara and Megumi encounter their rivals from Kyoto Jujutsu Tech, including Mai Zinin and Aoi Toto. Toto challenges Megumi to a brutal battle, but Panda and Toge intervene to prevent him from going too far. Maki reveals her unique fighting style to Nobara, relying on cursed weapons due to her inability to use cursed energy. Meanwhile, Gojo confronts Kyoto's principal, Gaku Ganji, exposing critical information about Jogo, Sukuna, and talented students like Yuta and Yuji, warning of an impending revolution. A month later, Mahito kills three students in a theater, but a teenage boy with the ability to sense him opposes him. Yoshino Junpei defies school attendance and opts for a visit to the movies instead, only to bear witness to a horrifying spectacle. His tormentors meet a gruesome demise, their faces transfigured. He decides to seek justice by pursuing Mahito, the perpetrator. In a surprising turn of events, Junpei implores Mihito to teach him the ways of controlling cursed energy, seeking to gain power and control over his circumstances. Mihito indoctrinates Junpei into his sadistic ideology, sharing his twisted beliefs. Meanwhile, Yuji and Nanami, a former salary man turned Jujutsu sorcerer, investigate and encounter formidable cursed spirits. Yuji reveals his unique cursed technique, enhancing his strength. They realize the entities are transfigured humans. Nanami separates to confront Mihito, while Yuji and Ijichi investigate Junpei's situation. Mihito indoctrinates Junpei with his twisted ideology of reshaping souls, promoting guilt-free killing. Junpei confronts his neglectful teacher, who had callously turned a blind eye to his tormentors but is stopped by Yuji. Meanwhile, Nanami fights Mihito in the sewers and discovers that those transfigured by Mihito suffer but remain alive. Pushed to the brink, Nanami's determination intensifies, leading him to unleash his full power, leaving Mahito taken aback by the unexpected surge of strength. Nanami emerges victorious against Mahito, but Mahito survives by manipulating his soul. Yuji connects with Junpei over their shared love for movies and expresses his commitment to sparing lives. Junpei's mother falls victim to Geto's scheme, and Mahito manipulates Junpei into believing Ito is responsible. Their plan is to manipulate Yuji by using his connection to Sukuna. Yuji arrives in time to stop Junpei from seeking revenge on Ito. Junpei battles Yuji using a poisonous cursed energy technique, fueled by his belief in humanity's lack of compassion. Yuji tries to convince Junpei to join Jujutsu High, but their encounter takes a turn when Mahito appears and manipulates Junpei. Junpei transforms into a disfigured monster, and despite Yuji's pleas, Sukuna refuses to help. Tragically, Junpei dies, leaving Yuji devastated. Fueled by anger, Yuji relentlessly attacks Mahito, his punches affecting both the physical form and soul of the cursed spirit. Sukuna's power protects Yuji and threatens Mahito's life. Nanami and Yuji exploit Mahito's weaknesses, launching a relentless assault on him. As Mihito nears defeat, he resorts to his domain expansion, trapping Nanami inside. Facing imminent danger, Nanami reflects on his journey from a purposeless corporate life to becoming a sorcerer, sparked by an encounter where he exercised a curse and witnessed gratitude. Meanwhile, Yuji breaks through the weakened domain and disrupts its inner workings. In an unexpected turn, Mihito's contact with Sukuna's soul leads to his own injuries, allowing him to escape. Distraught, Yuji confides in Nanami, sharing the weight of having taken a life and vowing to never waver again. Geto, Jogo, and Mahito plan to assault Tokyo Jujutsu Tech and revive Sukuna. Meanwhile, during the exchange event, the Kyoto students discover Yuji's survival, but plot to assassinate him, unbeknownst to his friends. Gojo suspects a traitor within Tokyo Jujutsu Tech and shares his concerns with Udahime Iori. The Kyoto students launch their assault on Yuji, but prior flashbacks reveal that the Tokyo students had anticipated their intentions to eliminate him. 
To level the playing field, the Tokyo team strategizes to disperse the Kyoto students. In the midst of the chaos, Yuji unexpectedly engages in a lively fistfight with Toto, a Kyoto student who surprisingly opposes the idea of killing him and genuinely desires friendship. Meanwhile, Megumi faces an attack from Noritoshi, while Kasumi prepares herself for a confrontation against Maki. Yuji trains in combat with Toto, learning about cursed energy. Meanwhile, Nobara is rendered unconscious by a non-lethal sniper shot delivered by Mekamaru. Panda steps in to confront Mekamaru, unveiling his intriguing backstory and unique technique. It is disclosed that Panda harbors three distinct personalities within him, capable of switching between them as he needs. Mekamaru discloses his true identity as a young sorcerer controlling the robot externally due to his severe illness that incapacitates his actual body. Panda's gorilla personality emerges victorious in their clash. Maki defeats Kasumi, exploiting the underestimation of her cursed energy deficiency. In a fierce battle, Nobara almost emerges victorious against Momo, only to be incapacitated by Mai's bullet. Maki confronts her sister, delving into their painful past within the Zenin clan, revealing the hardships they faced in Maki's choice to leave and become a powerful sorcerer. Mai, coerced into becoming a sorcerer, resents her sister for abandoning her. Maki astonishes by catching Mai's cursed energy bullet barehanded, showcasing her extraordinary physical strength. Unfortunately, both Mai and Nobara suffer defeat and are eliminated from the event. Toge employs his unique ability to eliminate Kasumi by commanding her to sleep through a phone call. However, the exchange event takes an ominous turn as a special grade cursed spirit makes its appearance, abruptly concluding the event. Megumi and Noritoshi fight, but Toge's sudden retreat leaves them trapped with the powerful entity. The invaders isolate Gojo and deploy a barrier, forcing Toge, Megumi, and Noritoshi to face the formidable special grade threat inside. Hanami, the formidable special grade cursed spirit, withstands Toge, Megumi, Noritoshi, and Maki's attacks. Yuji and Aoi join the fight to save Maki, while Panda and Momo protect the injured and lead them to safety. In the midst of the clash, Yuji unveils the Black Flash technique acquired through his training with Aoi. Hanami retaliates by unleashing a second arm, intensifying the confrontation between the two sides. Aoi astounds everyone with his boogie woogie technique, enhancing Yuji's attacks on Hanami. As Hanami prepares her domain expansion, Gojo intervenes and incapacitates Juzo. With immense power, Gojo unleashes a devastating blast of cursed energy. It obliterates half of the surrounding forest, leaving Itadori and Toto in all of Gojo's overwhelming strength. Meanwhile, Mahito successfully acquires one of Sukuna's fingers during the chaos, revealing that the school invasion served as a distraction. Hanami miraculously survives Gojo's assault while Mahito reveals the true purpose of the attack, a diversion for his massacre at the Tokyo High School. Cunningly, Mahito escapes with valuable artifacts. Geto hints at a grand scheme in Shibuya, cautioning against harming Megumi to Sukuna's interest in him. Unfazed, Gojo transforms the exchange event into a baseball game, providing these students respites from battles. Megumi, Nobara, and Yuji are assigned a mission to investigate a series of deaths linked to Megumi's former school, Saitama Urami East Junior High, discovering a curse behind them. Megumi's stepsister, who remains in a coma, is at risk of falling victim to it unless they exercise the curse promptly. Meanwhile, Mahito and Geto summoned a cursed womb as part of their malevolent plans. Yuji and Obara are forced to leave the ongoing battle to deal with new curses, while Megumi faces a powerful special grade curse alone. Drawing strength from Gojo Sensei's teachings, Megumi activates his domain expansion, Chimera Shadow Garden, and emerges victorious. He reflects on his connection with his sister. Meanwhile, Yuji and Obara encounter unexpected opponents in their pursuit. Yuji and Obara suffer the decay technique inflicted by the Cursed Womb Brothers, but Nobara cleverly turns the tables and eliminates them with her own technique. After the battle, they confront the weight of taking human lives. Discovering Megumi with Sukuna's finger, they are interrupted by his awakening. Megumi urgently warns against consumption, but Sukuna devours it. Later, Gojo discusses the traitor and makes arrangements with Urahime and Meimei. Aoi and Meimei propose the grade one sorcerer classification for Yuji, Megumi, Nobara, Maki, and Panda. Yuta Okatsu, a high school student, endures frequent bullying until a fateful day when the tormentors meet a gruesome fate at the hands of a cursed spirit that clings to him. 
Concerned about the dangerous nature of Yuta's curse, the Jujutsu Society's authorities desire his elimination. However, Satoru Gojo, a teacher at Jujutsu High, intervenes by recruiting Yuta into the school, thus saving him. Yuta reveals that the cursed spirit is Rika, a childhood friend with whom he made a promise to marry in the future. Rika, tragically, perished in an accident and became a protective spirit who harms anyone that possesses a threat to Yuta. At the school, Yuta encounters Maki Zinin, Toge Inumaki, and Panda, fellow students who also possess unique abilities. During his initial mission alongside Maki, Yuta successfully summons Rika independently for the first time, rescuing them from a cursed spirit. As three months pass during his training at the school, Yuta forms close bonds with Maki, Inumaki, and Panda. On a mission with Inumaki one day, the group is assaulted by a high-level curse. The perpetrator is revealed to be Suguru Geto, a former student and Gojo's old friend who was expelled for murdering numerous innocent individuals. Geto establishes a cult aimed at aiding troubled individuals and absorbing cursed spirits using his technique. Geto attempts to sway Yuta to his side, seeking to exploit Rika's powers. However, Yuta refuses after Geto insults his friends. In retaliation, Geto initiates a war, planning to unleash a thousand curses upon the city to exterminate non-sorcerer humans, as he deems sorcerers superior. Nevertheless, Geto's true motive behind the conflict is to distract Gojo so he can eliminate Yuta and absorb Rika. Gojo discovers this upon learning about Yuta's past and dispatches Inumaki and Panda back to the school to protect Yuta and Maki, both of whom are not participating in the battle due to their inexperience. Overwhelming everyone in his path, Geto leaves only Yuta standing. Witnessing his friend's suffering, Yuta, consumed by rage, makes a vow to sacrifice himself to unlock Rika's full power and defeat Geto. As a result, Geto sustains several injuries. Gojo eventually finds the wounded Geto and puts an end to his life. Gojo reveals that Yuta unintentionally cursed Rika instead of the other way around by struggling to accept her demise. It is unveiled that both Yuta and Gojo are descendants of one of the most formidable sorcerers in history, which explains their remarkable abilities and distant familial connection. Yuta breaks the curse after pledging himself to Rika, enabling her to find peace. Yuta then continues his journey as a sorcerer in training alongside his friends at Jujutsu High. And that's it for Jujutsu Kaisen Zero and Season 1. I cannot wait for Season 2. And speaking of, I will be covering every episode of JJK Season 2 weekly when it eventually releases. Like the video and subscribe to the Sea Tactics channel and click on that notification bell so you won't miss out on anything I plan to do in the future. Take care and bye bye